So guys, in last session, uh, we were talking about uh, hyperparameter tuning and we have covered Git search and uh, randomized search technique. So both techniques so we have covered in the last session using scikit-learn. Okay, next so we will talk about uh, descent tree and random forest. So both algorithm we will implement using scikit-learn first. Okay, so what is descent tree? Descent tree is a classification and regression algorithm. Descent tree is a classification and regression algorithm. It is a flowchart like structure where each decision node makes some decision on the basis of some condition and each leaf node represents a class level. See, uh, okay, let's take an example here. Suppose we have a machine learning problem where we have to uh, grant loan or not, right? We have to approve the loan or not. Suppose we have some features. Let's say we have a feature here, salary per month, salary per month. And uh, if the salary is per month greater than 10,000, 10, then uh, we have two cases, true or false. If the condition is true, then uh, here we have second condition uh, work experience if the work experience is greater than three if the work experience is greater than three then uh, again here we have two cases true and false so if this condition is true then our model will approve the loan model will approve the loan so the output here we will get the yes uh, if the condition becomes false, then we will get the output here no. And here also, if this condition becomes false, again here, we will get the output as a no. So you can see this is a tree structure diagram. This is a tree structure diagram where the okay, uh, tree structure diagram, which consists decision node and leaf node. So this is decision node because here we are trying to make some decision on the basis of some condition. Here also we are trying to make some decision on the basis of given condition. So these two nodes are the decision nodes. Are the decision nodes. So this is also a decision nodes. Decision nodes. And the node at the top, means, uh, I'm talking about this one, the node at the top is called root node. Means a uh, uh, decision node at the top is called root node. We can also call it as a root node. These are also nodes, but we can call them as a leaf node, right? We can call all these nodes as a leaf node. So in the leaf node, uh, basically we get the output. In the leaf node, we get the output. So these are the leaf node. Right, so we can say uh, decision tree consists decision nodes and leaf node, where each decision node makes some decision on the basis of some condition, and each leaf node represents a class level, right? Class level, or we can say final output. It uses a set of rules to make some decision. Mostly, we use decision tree for classification problem. Okay, next uh, thing about this decision tree is entropy. So what is entropy here? Entropy. Now question is how to select the feature, how to select the feature at a decision node. Right? Here in this uh, here in this example, uh, we can see we have a feature Sally. Here we have a feature work experience. Right, so how to decide that uh, what feature we have to select at a decision mode. So that we can decide on the basis of entropy. So entropy measures the impurity of a node. Entropy measures, it measures the impurity of a node. And there's a formula to find the impurity that we will discuss in a while. It measures the impurity of a node impurity of a node now question is what is impurity so 
I would say that uh, impurity means, uh, uh, suppose if we have a node, if we have a decision node, right, and the, and the impurity of this node, uh, let's say uh, impurity of this node is zero, right? Or we can say uh, if the impurity means, or we can say uh, if we have all the samples in a decision node, right? If all the samples in a decision node are belonging to the same class, right? Are belonging to the same class, right? So in that case, we can say impurity is low, right? Impurity is low, right? If all the samples, suppose we have this uh, decision node D1, right? And in this node, we have a number of samples 50, and we have two classes, class A and class B. If all the 50 samples in this node are belonging to the same class, means either to class A or class B. So in that case, we can say impurity is low or impurity is zero. So when we have impurity equal to zero, in that case, all the samples of a decision node will belong to the same class. So entropy we use to measure the impurity of a node. It helps in selecting the best splitter while building a decision tree. It lies between zero and one. And the value of the entropy always lie between zero and one. And we have one more technique that is Gini index. That is Gini index. It is also used to measure the impurity of a node. Lower the Gini index means higher the purity of a node. Lower, lower the Gini index, lower the Gini index means higher the purity of a node. Higher the purity of a node. It means all the samples of a node are belonging to the same class. Uh, higher the purity of a node. If Gini index is zero, then all the samples are belonging to the same class of a node. Okay. So the formula is uh, the formula uh, formula is to find the Gini index is one minus the mission i equal to one till n n is the number of classes and then probability of of each ith class probability of each ith class then we can take the square so this is a formula to find the Gini index. And the formula of entropy, in the case of entropy, we use a log. Okay, so if you want to uh, avoid the log in the computation, you can just use the Gini index. So I think formula is uh, minus summation i equal to 1 till n, and then pi log of 2 log this 2 into pi. This is the formula of entropy okay uh let's check okay we want to make confirm what is the formula of first we want to check the formula of guinea so guinea index we use to measure the impurity guinea index and decision tree guinea index and decision tree you can see this so one minus summation j equal to i till c and probability of j class then square. This is the formula of Gini index and this is the formula of entropy, right? So Gini index is easy to implement, right? Okay, and uh, there is one more thing that is max depth. So in, okay, in a uh, decision tree, there are some hyperparameters. Okay, I'll show you what are these. Uh, SK learn decision tree, uh, decision tree classifier. Okay, so you can see these are the hyperparameters. So if you talk about some important hyperparameters, which are uh, this uh, criterion means uh, uh, this Gini index algorithm, max depth, max depth means depth of the tree, right? So uh, if the tree grow, right? So we can say uh, then uh, it will be large. Right, and if we have a very large and complex tree, so there might be overfitting formula. 
it overfitting means our model performing well on the train data but not on the test data maximum features random state we can provide right so these are the hyperparameters so the the max uh, the maximum depth of the tree if none then nodes are expanded until all the leaves are pure or until all the leaves contain less than minimum sample split right so the minimum sample split is equal to two so here uh, we can use skinny and droppy or long loss but the default is guinea so the main reason behind using guinea or index is to measure the purity Okay, so I'll show you how to uh, implement the decision tree using Scikit-Learn decision tree. Okay, so to uh, uh, to understand the working behind decision tree, I'm going to take Iris data set again. So from sklearn dot dot tree import decision tree classifier. Then from sklearn dot data sets import load iris from sklearn dot model selection import train test split okay and uh, iris equal to load iris so if we have a lot of features in our data Right, so in that case, a uh, decision tree is not a good option. Right, so uh, most of the time uh, we will get overfitting issue if we have a lot of features. Right, so in that case, if you want to use something which is based on decision tree, right, so we can use random forest that we will discuss in a while. So load iris and uh, x equal to iris dot data, y equal to iris dot target now we want to split the data into train test so x train comma x test comma y train comma y test equal to train test split we can pass it x comma y comma test size equal to 0 0.20 and uh, now we want to use decision tree. So dt equal to decision tree classifier. Okay, and then dt dot fit. Let's pass here x train, comma, y train, x train, comma, y train. Okay, next uh, we want to visualize the decision tree. Right? So uh, there are some commands through which we can visualize our trained dysentery model so this is the benefit of using dysentery that we can also visualize the dysentery train model so let's see uh search uh, so let's search here uh visualize dysentery sql learn dysentery in python uh, dysentery using sql learn okay i think uh, you can see tree dot plot tree is a function that is uh plot tree here we can pass decent tree model next step okay uh let's see what how we can display decent tree okay here you can see um just copy this and uh paste it here okay now let's try to understand this code so here okay first i'm going to import matplotlib import Map.lib is our data visualization library dot pyplot as plt. So first we can set the uh, figure size. Right? Okay. And uh, tree dot plot tree. Here we can also see in this method tree dot plot tree. Right. So tree dot plot tree, we can pass our train model that is here dt. Then we can pass the features name, right? So whatever features we have, or whatever the features we have used while training, such features you can pass here. So here uh, we have used all the features, so we can pass iris dot features name. Okay, I'll show you what we have in iris dot features name. We have four features. 
So all the features you can pass here. Next to iris dot target names means oh, whatever classes we have passed while training a model. So all such classes uh, we can also pass here. So iris dot target names. Okay, I'll show you what we have in iris dot target names. So we here we have got three classes. Okay, so we can pass here. Field equal to true means uh, we will get the color here. If you see uh, this diagram here. So here, you, so here you will find the colors. Okay, let's run this code. Uh, I think here, um, here we have to also import this tree. So from sklearn import tree. Okay, uh, let's, if you don't want to store anything, target, we go to two, here on this. Oh, we are getting this, okay. Here we are getting output as a text and also this this visualization okay so we don't want to store this so we can pass underscore equal to right means so uh, if you don't want to store this output and right, you can just use underscore equal to this turn this again now you can see we are getting only this graph so this is our root node right where the condition is if paddle width is less than equal to 0 0.8 right then this condition will be true or false so, so if this condition is true so in that case the class will be citosa right the class will be citosa okay and here uh, you can also notice this green index the green index of this node is 0 0.65 we have total number of samples in this node is 120 right and out of 120 samples 37 samples are belonging from class 0 43 samples belonging from class 1 and 40 samples belonging from class 2 and the default class is versicular right the default class of this node is versicular but we always consider the class in uh, class of the leaf node this is the leaf node you can see right class into citosa this is now this is a, another decision node, decision node, decision node. Okay, here you can see uh, in this leaf node, we are getting green index equal to zero, right? As I said before, if we have green index equal to zero, means we have a high purity, right? We have a high purity or we have low impurity. High purity means or low impurity means uh, all the samples of that node are belonging to the same class. Here you can see all the 37 samples are belonging to the same class, means class zero. Okay. And uh, okay, these are the this year nodes. This, okay, here you can also see this is also a leaf node with green index equal to zero. So it is not necessary that always uh, we will get the green index zero in the leaf node. Okay, and uh, Okay, so green index zero means so uh, here you can see all the 34 samples belonging to the same class, Virginia. Here also green index zero, green index zero, zero, zero. Here also zero, we are getting zero and zero. But every time it is not possible that we will get the green index equal to zero in the leaf node. So this is how we can uh, visualize the descent tree after fitting a model. Okay, now let's take a sample from the testing. We take a let's t equal to x test index zero. So at index zero, we have the sample and uh, okay. First, we have sample length, sample width, pattern length, and pattern width. So if we call uh, method predict after the training, if we call method predict, right? So how this model will classify the sample? Right? How this model will classify the sample? Okay, so look at this graph. Uh, or uh, first, we have condition that is if petal width is less than or equal to zero point eight. So petal width we have in the sample is one point three, right? Petal width is one point three. So if petal width is less than zero point eight, right? So this condition becomes false because our petal width is one point three, which is greater than zero point eight. Now, uh, okay, now we will come into this. This entry, oh, sorry, into this descent mode. Here we have a 
again a condition that is a, a petal width less less than equal to 1.75 okay so is 1.7 if less than 1.75 but here we have 1.3 so again this condition is false sorry uh is less than equal to but here we have here we have 1.3 right so now this condition is true right now this condition is true because you know, the condition is is a petal width less than equal to 1.75 but here we have 1.3 right so now this condition is true now we will go at this decision node here the condition is a petal length is less than equal to 4.95 less than but here we have petal length is 4 4 point so uh, it's now again this condition is true right because our petal length is less than 4.95 right now we will go add this decision node here we have a petal width is less than equal to is less than equal to 1.65 less than equal to 1.65 but here we have 1.3 right so this condition is true now we will get at this node and the final output on that sample will be here class versicolor right class versicolor okay class versicolor means class 0 class 1 class 1 okay i'll show you what will be the predicted label for the sample so dt dot predict dt dot predict and let's pass the sample t you can see we are getting class one class one means versicular right and the same thing we can get if we look at this graph right the same thing we can get from this graph right class versicular the next uh, how we can find the accuracy here on the test data read equal to read equal to dt dot dt dot predict we can pass all samples next here to find the accuracy score we have another way that is to use a score method right we can also call a score method and it will also return the accuracy score so here the first argument we can pass okay uh, but if we use this method we have to pass input and output data means there is no need to pass predicted labels we can pass x test comma y test so we are getting here accuracy 1.0 it means all the samples of test data are classified correctly right all the test samples are classified correctly here by this model so we are getting an accuracy score 1.0 but if you want to get accuracy using accuracy function so we have to import it first from sklearn dot matrices import accuracy score so accuracy score we can pass here y test comma you can see we are getting the same score right so accuracy score so accuracy score either we can find with the help of this inbuilt function or we can use this method score okay next uh what will happen if we pass uh first two features we want to see the model performance if we pass only first two features sample length and sample width so now our model is performing well on all the features but what will happen if we pass only first two features so um, let's do here slicing select all the rows and then pass slicing for the columns that we want to use so we want to use first two columns we can pass column two okay okay now let's run this uh we have trained our model okay and uh we want to just see the graph here so here our features name okay here we have used first two features so we can pass column two okay now you can see here we have got a large and complicated decision tree it means now uh now here uh, we have got a uh, over fitting problem okay i'll show you uh that we can check using accuracy score on the test data you can see accuracy score on the test data we are getting 30 percent means a lot of samples are misclassified by this model right if you want to get the uh, if, uh, if you want to display the training score so we can pass here y train comma dt dot 
predict dt dot predict and here we can pass x accuracy score for the train data is 0 0.93 and the accuracy score for the test data is 30 percent you can see our model performing good on the train data but not on the test data right so this is an overfitting problem so whenever we have a large and complicated decision tree right so we will get an overfitting issue so if uh, here we are passing first two feature sapper length and sapper width then we are getting overfitting problem okay let's also try with last two features pattern length and pattern width what will be the model performance if we pass last two features we want to just see this graph and uh, let's pass here to column you can see now we have a very uh, small descent tree here so on the basis of this descent tree of uh, visualization we can say uh, there is no overfitting problem okay okay i'll show you using this accuracy score you can see our train score is 1.0 means 100 percent accuracy and test score is 0.93 okay train score is 0.93 so our model performing good on the test data as well as on the train data so now we can say if we pass unnecessary features right or we can say uh, insignificant features into the dysentery model while training then there might be a overfitting issue right there might be a overfitting issue so now we have just passed last two features pedal length and pedal width right now our model is performing well so how we can calculate this value green leaks okay let's use the formula that we have seen one minus okay we want to get this value 0 0.65 so one minus then uh probability of each class then square so probability of class zero that will be equal to uh 37 divided by total number of samples 120 then we can take the square probability then plus then 39 divided by 120 and then square okay here we have to use you can use power 2 here also we can use power 2 then uh, 44 divided by 120 and sorry okay and uh, power 2 you can see 0. 0.6 is 4 right and which is very similar to this one 0. 0.6 is 5 so if we round off this value right okay, this value we will get the same value 0. 0.6 is 5 okay so this is how we can find the green index so we can select the feature we can select a feature at a given node if that feature has uh, we can say high uh, sorry uh, we can say if that uh, feature has low green index right low green index means high purity here you can see we have green index equal to zero it means we have a high purity of this node here we have green index 0 0.05 right here we have green index 0 0.32 so if we have green index equal to zero or close to zero means our uh, most of the samples or all the samples are belonging to the same class now let's talk about random forest random forest is based on dysentery right so most of the time we get overfitting follow in dysentery so uh, if we have a lot of features then instead of dysentery we can use random forest so random forest means multiple dysenteries so random forest we can also use for classification and regression and also we can use this algorithm for feature selection so we can use this algorithm for classification regression and feature selection also so random forest we have two words here random and forest forest means as you know uh, forest means multiple decision trees multiple decision trees and what does it mean by here r means random so random means this algorithm based on random sampling with replacement right random sampling with replacement right what is that that we will discuss in a while 
रैंडम सैम्पलिंग विथ रिप्लेसमेंट और वी कैन से बूट स्ट्रैप सैम्पलिंग बूट स्ट्रैप सैम्पलिंग बूट स्ट्रैप सैम्पलिंग बूट स्ट्रैप सैम्पलिंग मीन्स क्रिएट सबसेट फॉर ईच इंडिविजुअल ट्री right in uh, in random forest we use multiple dysentery right so both step sampling means create subset for each individual dysentery right and subset means select random rows and columns from original data set means here we have to create subset for each individual dysentery right and while creating a subset we have to select the random rows and random columns from original data the bootstrap uh, sampling okay, or we can say uh, it is possible to choose an observation in a subset that has already chosen in some other subset okay let's take an example here suppose we have this data set d n and uh, we have uh, d columns here and we have n rows here in this data we have d features and n rows so in random forest we have to mention the number of dysentery that we want to use means before training this model we have to mention how many dysentery we want to use in training suppose if we pass a uh, dysentery okay so in random forest there is a hyperparameter that is n estimators and estimators so into this hyperparameter we have to mention how many dysentery we want to use and estimators so let's say we want to use here uh, three dysenteries and we want to use here three dysenteries means uh, here we have to create three subsets so, okay so this is okay uh, let's say this is dysentery one dysentery two and dysentery three and here we have to create three subset also so this is subset one for the dysentery one subset two for the dysentery two subset three for the dysentery three now each subset we can create using row sampling plus column sampling it means we can pick random rows and random columns Right, random rows and random columns to create each subset. Here also we can pick random rows, yes, uh, uh, okay, or we can say a row sampling. This is called row sampling. This is called column sampling. Right. So in the row sampling, we can pick random rows, and in the column sampling means we can pick random columns. So again, row sampling plus column sampling. Again, for this subset three, we can use here row sampling plus column sampling. Now, this S one we can use to train dysentery D one. S two we can use to train D two. S three we can use to train D three. Okay. So this is a working at the time of training our random forest. Right? This is a working at the time of training. Now. Let's see uh, what will the working at the time of testing. Okay, so now here we have got uh, uh, three dysentery. We have dysentery one, uh, dysentery two, and dysentery three. Okay, now uh, we have a, a test sample also. We have a, a sample for the testing. So uh, that's T1 here. So this T1 sample we can pass into each dysentery, into the D1, D2, and D3. Right, this T1 sample. We can pass into each dysentery here into the d1 d2 and d3 now each dysentery will return some output so about this so uh, dysentery uh, which returns class a and this returns class b and this return class c so class sorry class a class b and class c class a we have two classes only so here we have got class a class b and class c now after that after that we can aggregate all the all the results right we can aggregate all the result right and the final result will be based on majority voting right final result right or the we can say a uh, predicted label will be based on 
majority voting in the case of classification. So here we can do majority voting in the case of classification. So the final output will be here class A. Right, and an output will be here class A. So in the case of classification, here it will perform majority voting to get the final output. And in the case of regression, it will find the average. Right, it will find the average of all the output, right, of all the output in the case of regression. But in the case of classification, it will do a majority voting. Okay, so this is a phase at the time of testing. At the time of testing. So in simple words, we can say random forest equal to decision tree. That will be our base classifier or base model. Decision tree. That will be our base model plus a row sampling plus column sampling plus aggregation. This is a simple definition of random forest. Aggregation. We have to aggregate the output. And in the case of classification, there will be majority voting. And in the case of regression, it will find the average. It will find the average of the aggregate result. So this is a simple definition of random forest. Okay, let's see how we can implement random forest. So here we can use from sklearn dot ensemble. Ensemble means multiple classifier. Right, multiple classifiers. Ensemble import a random random forest classifier. We can okay. Uh, let's show restart and color output. Okay, then we can load the data. Okay, first we want to try on all the features. So x equal to is data, r is target, and uh, we can take twenty percent sample for the testing. That's eighty percent samples for the training. Here we can use random forest equal to random forest classifier. Then rf dot bit x train comma y train and here we can see the hyperparameter nsg meters so the default value is 100 right the default value is 100 okay let's uh, go ahead with the default value next here uh, we want to just get the accuracy score right so you know we want to get the accuracy from the test data so rf dot rf dot score and we can pass here uh, x test comma y test we're getting 0.93 okay and uh, here also we uh, we want to calculate the accuracy of decent model but on some other data set so here uh, let's take a load digit data set instead of load iris let's take a load digits not load iris they equal to load digits and here we can pass d dot data and d dot target split the data x chain you can see the test score is 0 0.86 it is six percent accuracy okay uh, same we want to get the accuracy on the train data so x train comma y train you can see 100 percent accuracy on the train data so here you can see we have got overfitted model, right? Because our model performing well on the train data, we are getting 100% accuracy. But on the test data, our model is not performing well. Okay, let's try with the random forest. So RF dot score, let's run this. You can see accuracy on the test data is 0.98. And the accuracy on the train data is 1.3. But if we run this code again, Right, so there may be some different accuracy because both dysentery and random first based on random sampling, right? So if you want to get, so there might be some change in the accuracy. You can see this time we are getting 97. 
So if you want to get the same accuracy, we can just set the state, right? Random state equal to let's say three. Now, uh, if you pass state three, so we are getting accuracy score 0.97 and the train is equal to 1.0. So if every time we pass state three, we will get the same accuracy that uh, that we are getting now. So you can see here we are getting a overfitting problem, but in the case of random forest, there is no overfitting problem. Our model is performing well on the train data as well as on the test data. You can also try with some other uh, with some other value of an estimators. An estimator. Okay, uh, let's pass an estimator uh, equal to one. So if we pass equal to one means in this random forest, we will have only single dysentery, right? And that will be equal to the dysentery algorithm. You can see 0.82 and here we are getting 0.90, right? So model performance is not good. So let's increase this value. Let's take a four. You can see test score is 0 0.90 and train score is 0 0.98, right? So our model performance has increased, okay? And let's take our value 20, 0.7, and 1.2, right? So if you want to increase the model performance, we have to pass the right value of n estimators. And right value we can find with the help of hyperparameter training. So this is how we can use random forest. So random forest contains multiple descent trees, right? And in the case of descent tree classifier, we have only single so random forest uh, we can also use to reduce the variance without increasing the bias so what is variance and what is bias so in simple words i would say uh, variance means variability in the model prediction right when model takes into consideration that noise and the fluctuation in the data it is said to be a high variance variability in the model prediction and uh, what does mean by bias so the difference between actual value and the predicted value, right? Actual output and the predicted output. So if we have a very large difference between actual output and the predicted output, we can say we have a high bias. And if we have a low difference between actual value and the predicted value, we can say uh, there is low bias, right? So bias is the difference between actual value and the predicted value. In the next session, we will implement dysentery using AWS SageMaker. Okay guys, so it is enough for today's session. Let's wind up the session and let's meet in the next class. Thank you.